writing a polynomial function. This is going to be a flashcard, speaking of. Um, the format for writing a polynomial function is always this y equals, there's some a coefficient, and then all of your factors, which is x minus whatever your roots are, and then raised to the m power, where m stands for multiplicity. So if it's a single root, the multiplicity is 1. Double root, the multiplicity is 2. Maybe you want to write that. Single root, m equals 1. Double, m equals 2. And triple, m equals 3. So, determine the equation of a quadratic function whose roots are negative 3 and 4 and that passes through 2 negative 50, which is way down here somewhere. So, I don't know how I'm going to use the 2 negative 50, but I definitely have my roots. So, so far I've got y equals some a value and x minus my root of negative 3. x minus negative 3 is going to turn into x plus 3. And then x minus my second root, which was 4, so x minus 4 would, will just be x minus 4. It doesn't mention multiplicity. It doesn't say anything as a single root, double root, or triple root. But just based on the fact that this is a quadratic, what's the maximum number of roots possible? Two, right? And we have both of them listed, so they each have to have a multiplicity of one. So you don't really need an exponent there. So we've used each of the roots. Our quest now is you have to find the a value. Number one, is it positive or negative? And number two, what's the actual value of how far this graph has been stretched vertically or compressed vertically? So what do you think we might do with this 2, negative 50 that they gave us to help us calculate A? They gave us a point on the function. Good, and? Right. If they give you a point that's supposedly supposed to be on the graph, plug it in just temporarily. This is pretty much what our equation's going to look like. We just need to find A. So plug in your point, 2 for X, <coughs> and negative 50 for Y, and solve for A. So negative 50 will equal A times 5 times negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then to solve for A, we just divide both sides by negative 10. And we get that A is 5. So pretty much that was our answer, except for we just now know that A is 5. And that this quadratic with these roots got stretched vertically by a factor of 5. It should make sense to you that that A value was positive because in order for this parabola to hit this point, it has to open down, right? Or open up, rather. It has to go down in order to hit that point in between. Here's another question for you, just out of curiosity. What is the x-coordinate of my vertex? What do you think? Not zero, but you're not far off. What would the x-coordinate of your vertex be? Do you want to refine your answer? Nope. How, Mike? Well, that's not roughly. That's exactly where it is. Where is the vertex always going to be relative to your roots? Halfway in between. So halfway between negative 3 and positive 4 is 
and I don't know exactly what the y value is, but now that I have an equation, I could plug that in if I wanted to and figure it out. 5 times uh, times 3.5 times 0.5 minus 4 would be negative 3.5. Negative 61.25. I've never seen one of these questions ask about the vertex. I just was, you know, bringing it all together. But that's, that's the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. Okie doke. Any questions? Okay. Consider this quadratic. They're already giving us the function. So if we wanted to start sketching a graph of this, where would the roots be? Kate, give me one of them. Five, very good. And the other one, Owen? Very good. Now because I don't know the A value, I don't know if this opens up or down. Just out of curiosity, because this happens a lot in math, and you guys, I know, just totally ignore it. But why do they tell us that A cannot be zero? Georgia? Right. If A was zero, it would cancel out your x squared. It would actually cancel out this entire problem, but it would just be a straight line. Even in y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. A cannot equal zero if you want something to be a quadratic, right? Because if a was zero, it would cross out that whole term and it would just be a line. Do you follow? Um, so little stipulations like that, they add on to the end. And I know most of you ignore them, but it's, it's, sometimes they also confuse kids, I know this, and they end up doing something wrong because they let something like that confuse them. Um, but just start to, we'll start to look at like why, what do these little things mean? Why would they have to in include that stipulation? So we have part A done. Our x-intercepts are negative 2 and 5. And then this wants us to sketch a bunch of different scenarios where in the first case A is 1, in the second case A is 2, and in the third case, A is 4. They all have the same roots. So they're all going to go through these, these two points. But this is going to shed light and show you visually how the A coordinate stretches each of these differently. So I think the easiest way is probably, um, probably to find the vertex maybe of all of them. So what is halfway between negative 2 and 5? If you want halfway between two numbers, can't you just take the average? Halfway between negative 2 and 5, add them up. Divide by 2, 1.5. And they're all, by the way, going to have a vertex with an x-coordinate of 1.5 since they all have the same roots. I think just to give us the three different graphs, I think then we just plug in 1.5 and we look for each of the vertexes y-intercept, which will be different for all of them. So on the first one, that's going to be 1.5 plus 2 times 1.5 minus 5. That's going to be negative 12.25. And then for the next one, it would be the same thing, except for we multiply it by 2 out in front, which is going to make it negative 24.5. And on the third one, it would be negative 12.25, except for it's being multiplied by 4 out in front, so that would be negative 49. So if I call this A, B, and C, 1.5, negative 49, That would be the third one. 
1.5, negative 24.5 would be around there-ish. That would be parabola B. And then 1.5, negative 12.5. would be parabola A. So just like we've kind of been talking about, as you move from A to B to C, when A gets higher and higher, we stretch taller and thinner each subsequent time. Steeper slope, I think someone mentioned yesterday, which is right. Okay? But because they all have the same roots, they all still hit those two points. And because they have the same roots, all of their vert vertices, vertexes, are halfway in between at 1.5. It's just based on the different stretches, it pulls their, y, uh, their vertex's y coordinate further and further down. Does that make sense? They're all positive A values, so they all open up. All sorts of good stuff to make connections on here, okay? Anything? All right. So <laughs> let's sketch this. X-intercepts of negative 4, 2, and 5. Go ahead and plot the X-intercepts of negative 4, 2, and 5. So it didn't say anything was a double root, so we'll just assume these are all single roots. So what's the degree of this polynomial going to be? Three, right? Three roots, degree of three. Give me one of the factors, Angie. So we're always going to start with y equals a, and if we have three roots, that means we have three factors. Give me one of them, Angie. Good. Alexa, another one? And Morgan, the last one. Good. And then remind us what we do, Jack Birmingham, to calculate A. Jack, can you look up the board for a second? We used that, that, and that already. We haven't used that. So how do we use that to help us find A? Okay, now go back and look at the front. For what and what? Right, this is an X coordinate, that's a Y coordinate. So you plug in a uh, y of 20 and an x of 6. I'm going to do the addition while I'm at it. That's, that'll be 10. 6 minus 2 will give me 4. 6 minus 5 will give me 1. And that's all 40, correct? Mm -hmm. So if I divide both sides by 40, a equals 1 half. So I'm, I just literally need to recopy what I had pretty much started with y equals one half x plus four x minus two x minus five now here's the annoying part it says in standard form this is in factored form okay so standard form means means i need to actually multiply all of this out so this is factored form And standard form is going to take some work. I'm going to leave my one half until the very end. But to multiply this out, I'm going to start here. That'll give me x squared. Minus 2x plus 4x will be plus a 2x minus an 8. And then, so the binomial times the binomial is not so bad. But now I have to do a trinomial times that last x minus 5. So that's x cubed minus 5x squared 
plus 2x squared minus 10x minus 8x plus 40 I have a little combining like terms to do and then I can distribute my one half unfortunately that is standard form which is more annoying than anything else because it's not really the point of the new topic that's just old basic algebra skills that you have to acquire now okay and then lastly a sketch of all of this this is a positive odd correct so starts how ends how Lucas B it's a positive odd it starts how and ends how it starts low ends high very good so we start low we come up and everything is a single root so I go straight through it I come down go straight through the next one I go up and straight through the last one and then you just want to double check to make sure everything kind of works because these should sort of self check meaning if you do something wrong you should run into a contradiction like I'm just really gonna check is does 620 make sense the six is right here is that a positive y coordinate Does 20 makes sense it does right if it was the point six negative something I'd be like oh boy something's wrong either my end behavior is wrong or maybe I made a, a mistake with my a calculation so these should sort of all come full circle and everything should work out if you reach a contradiction know to go back and look for some mistake okay last type here we finally are given a double root so create the equation of a cubic in standard form that has a double zero at negative two so if you have a double zero at negative two what does that factor look like do you think Vince get my y equals a down no because an x minus 2 would indicate that there's a root at positive 2 and they didn't say that they said it was a double root at negative 2 yes so that affects the multiplicity so for the first time we actually need to have a multiplicity other than one and then we have another zero at four which would be what factor Natalie good <coughs> now what point are they giving me to plug in that's not a point a point would be an x coordinate comma a y coordinate so you got to read between the lines here what do your flashcards tell you about all y intercepts x is zero so even though they're not telling you 0 16 you need to read between the lines there and know that a y intercept means 0 16 so everyone go ahead on your own right now plug in 0 16 for x and y and solve for a
Faye, what are you thinking A equals? Negative 1. Angie, what did you get for A? Anyone get anything other than negative 1? Okay, I didn't finish it yet. But I plugged in my 0, 16, and then I just made 0 plus 2, 2, and 0 minus 4, negative 4. So yes, all of this, 2 squared is 4 times negative 4, all of that is negative 16. And then when you divide both sides by negative 16, you get A equals negative 1. So Y equals negative 1. X plus 2 squared times X minus 4. That's your factored form. Ugh. Ugh. They said standard. Before I do that. Um, also, sketch it. So, what is the degree of our polynomial, did we say? 3. And is it a negative odd or a positive odd? Negative odd. So does it? How does it start? How does it end? Starts high end full. Keeping in mind that this double zero makes this a bounce. So when I start high, I'm going to bounce off of that, like it's the bottom of a parabola, and then I have to turn around wherever I feel like it and come back down through my single root. Does my graph appear to have a y-intercept of 16? It's hard to tell the numerical value, but is it a positive y-intercept? Yes. If you do your end behavior wrong, you'd have everything flipped upside down, and your graph would show a negative y-intercept, but wait, that doesn't make sense because I'm supposed to have a positive y-intercept. That's what I mean about this self-checks. You'd have some sort of contradiction if you made a mistake. So I'm pretty convinced this is right. Now really quickly, just for my standard form, I'm going to square this out. Remember how you properly square a binomial. And then I'm going to distribute. All with a negative 1 out in front. So my 4x squareds are going to cancel. I'm running out of room, so watch me be careful. I'm going to combine and negate everything all at the same time. I'm going to combine and distribute the negative 1. So it's going to be a negative x cubed. I would have had a negative 12x, but I'm distributing a negative 1. That's going to push it to positive 12x. And then a negative 16 times negative 1 is positive 16. Okie doke. Alright, as far as flashcards and engagement. <laughs>